Hello, welcome to Physio Designer Tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to perform a in silico voltage clamp experiment. We start from a Hodgkin Huxley model and extract only channel modules. This is possible because of modular structure of models written in PHML. Okay, let's begin with a background of the voltage clamp technique. The voltage clamp is an experimental method to measure the ion currents through the cell membranes, while holding the membrane voltage at a given level. This is usually applied to excitable cells, such as neurons. Cell membranes of excitable cells contain many different kinds of ion channels, some of which are voltage dependent. The voltage clamp is applied to investigate the current voltage relationships of such channels. The concept of this technique was originally developed by Dr. Kenneth Cole and George Marmont in 1947. They used a giant axon of a squid in their experiments. The slide shows a scheme of the two electrode voltage clamp. One electrode records voltage of the membrane, and the other injects current to keep the zero difference between the recorded membrane potential and a given clamp target voltage. All right. Then let's create a model for the voltage clamp, utilizing the Hodgkin-Huxley model. Firstly, load a Hodgkin-Huxley model, which is in the sample directly of Physio Designer. Let's check dynamics of the membrane potential. Right-click on the out port, and select Observe Time Course, which shows the time course came out from the out port. Double-click the module which corresponds to the membrane level, showing three internal modules, which represent sodium, potassium, and leak currents, respectively. These modules are operating by receiving the membrane potential. If we give a clamp target voltage directly to them, they will provide currents which are observed in the voltage clamp experiment. Let's extract these three modules, and make them independent. If you select modules by pressing a command key for Mac, and control key for Windows, you can select multiple modules simultaneously. Once selected, move them out from the parent module, and select the original root module, and remove it. Now you have only three ionic current modules. We don't use the current pulse generator module, so remove it as well. Next, we will create a clamp target voltage generator. Right-click on the white canvas, and select Make Module. Input the module name, and right-click on the new module, select Edit Physical Quantity dialog. Create a variable parameter type physical quantity, named Clamp Voltage. Move to Implementation tab, select Conditional for the definition type, because, the clamp voltage must change its value from zero to a certain value stepwise. We use if, else clause in its definition. In the first text box, a condition must be written. Here it is, time is larger than onset. Time is a predefined physical quantity representing the time during a simulation. Onset is not defined yet, hence when focus shifts to the next text box, a small dialog appears and asks you if you want to create its entry automatically. Click Yes. In the second text box, a definition is written. Here it is, clamp voltage is equal to on voltage. Again on voltage is not defined yet, so you are asked if you want to create it. Then, we need to define the next condition. Click plus icon, and select else in the combo box. In the case of the else clause, we don't need to input condition. Definition here is, clamp voltage is equal to zero. Both of onset and on voltage are created as static parameters. And now it is okay. We change their value now. Select onset in the table, and set 20 in the implementation tab, which means, after 20 millisecond from the beginning of the simulation, the clamp voltage becomes on. And move to on voltage, and set 80, which means the clamp target voltage is 80 millivolt. Finally, go back to clamp voltage physical quantity in the table. This value must be exported from this module, so we have to make an association with an out port. In the basic setting tab, at lower right area, set the name for the new out port. Click Add button, 
and select the newly created outport in the list. That's all in this dialog, click OK button. To give the clamp target voltage to every ionic current module, by drag and drop, draw edges from the outport of the clamp voltage module, to imports of current modules. Now the voltage clamp model is completed. Let's save it. And call Flint from Simulation menu, to run a simulation. Click Run button on Flint. Go to Detail, and View. Drag and drop IK, INA, and I leak from variable list box to Y1 box. You can also put the clamp voltage to the Y2 box to use the right Y axis. You see now, the sodium current rapidly decreased, which corresponds to the outward current from cell cytoplasm, and back to zero soon. In contrast, the potassium current showed slower increase, hence it is the inward current, and kept the level after that. This is the basic properties of these channels. Next, let's run several simulations with different clamp target voltages. Go back to the main window of Flint, and go to Parameters tab. Click Define Value Set button. In this dialog, you can define a parameter with a list of values. For example, set name of a parameter, V, and select intimate type of the parameter, and define the values separated by commas. Now let's use 40, 60, and 80, for V. Click OK button. For the value of on voltage physical quantity, instead of single value, such as 80, put V, which we have just defined, and click Run button. In this case, three simulations were performed automatically using three values in turn for the on-voltage physical quantity. OK, instead of checking their dynamics on Flint, we saved the simulation results into a file, so that we can observe the dynamics on PH Plotter, which is freely available application to draw graphs at Physiome JP. Flint creates a directory, in which it creates several ISD files, and one text file. An ISD file is a binary file containing simulation results, and the text file is listing the simulation result file names and corresponding parameter values, so that users can know that which result file is the result of which parameter value. Launch the PH plotter. To open file, you can drag and drop files to the data file area, or click Add button, or call Open Add Data from File menu. It can load multiple files simultaneously. Select one file in the list, then a list of physical quantities included in the data file is shown in the middle box. You can search physical quantities. Tick a checkbox at left side to draw a graph using the left Y axis. You can add graphs by ticking other checkboxes. Right click on the canvas show the context menu. The reset menu rests the X and Y range. Clicking Apply Checks for All Data Files button, the physical quantities in the All Data Files which have the same name with the checked physical quantities in the currently selected file are also ticked. Hence in this case, as you saw, finally there are six graphs, that is, three curves of IK, and three curves of INA. In the Preferences window, you can adjust properties of axes and graphs. You can change the range of X and Y axis at the Axis tab. Also you can change the color and thickness of curves at the Line tab. Legend label for each curve can be assigned here. Finally, you can compare the simulation results for the different clamp target voltages. As increasing the clamp voltages, the potassium current reaches higher value. Contrary, the sodium current shows the highest peak for 60 mV clamp voltage, and for 40 and 80 mV, the peak is lower. However in a case of the 40 mV, the initial rise time constant was larger than the other cases. That's all for this tutorial. Thank you for watching until the end. See you next time. Goodbye.